So now we have this vector, which means that we can concentrate on it as a whole. So if I click on it, all the vectors are grouped together. So it's one big vector. Or if I want to work on one individual spot of it, say here, we have to delete this vector right here because it doesn't need to be there. So what we are going to do is we are actually going to right click on this while it's um, highlighted and we are actually going to ungroup the objects into undo, ungroup into group layers. So I'm just going to click on that and now you'll notice that it's not solid anymore, it's now dotted, which means that all these vectors are separated, which allows you to really get in there and see what in the world's going on. So if I go in there, if I zoom in, and I'm doing that by rolling the mouse, uh, the roller on my mouse, and I click on that, I don't want that vector. That vector is going to carve out, it's going to do something, it's going to come across as an open vector, and it's going to mess up this little part here. So you just delete it, you hit delete, and it's gone. Um, other than that, we're looking okay, and seeing as though this is just a quick test, I'm not overly worried about any any uh, issues with little bumps and things down here. So now what I've got is I've got these open vectors. So this is one huge vector. This is a vector, and this is a vector, and so forth and so on. So you have to be very careful about what is in a vector and what is highlighted and what is not because that's going to affect how you cut it out. So as I said the one we're doing today is very basic. They can get exceptionally complicated and I hope to do one later on once we actually show the pieces here and the students logos and writing in here will actually get way more complicated but right now we're just doing the base cutout of the frame of what this is going to look like. So what I'm going to do is I am going to select this vector so it's the whole outside. And then I'm going to go 3D view. And right now it's gray and it looks borderline ridiculous, but that's fine. And then I'm going to click on tool paths. And in tool paths, it gives you a bunch of options. There's profile path, pocket path, drilling tool path. So this is if you're making cabinets and stuff like that. There's inlay paths, there's 3D paths, there's all these kind of things. The main paths we use is something called a V-carve and there's something called a tool uh, profile. We are just going to be doing profile right now. Okay, that is all we're gonna be doing. We're not gonna be doing V-carve. You may see it a little later on when we do it, but we don't want V-carve right now. Because what V-carve does is it takes, if you have a circle, a vector is a circle, what it's going to do is literally carve out to a specified depth in between the vector lines. So it will carve out that circle in depth. We don't want that, we just want the trace. So what we are going to do is we're going to click on this toolpath, which is a profile toolpath. Now, this is where it starts getting interesting. Cut depth, zero. Start depth is zero. Cut depth is going to be 0 0.54. Now, as we said before, this 0 0.5 was the depth of our board. We've got it 0 0.54, cause it, so it will go all the way through. We would never do this on something we are actually printing. Okay, this is something just for a test. So I would leave that at 0 0.5. And then what we would do is we would just sand the back of it until it fell off. But what we are going to do now is 0 0.54. So you can actually see what it looks like when all the parts are gone. I'm going to choose this big thick uh, ball nose. And it's saying it's going to take five passes. So it's going to have to go around it five times to cut it out. That is fine. We're not getting into editing passes and we're not going to get into editing tools in this tutorial. It's just way too much. The main thing when you're profiling that you need to pay, uh, keep track of is this on-side, on, inside, outside framework. Okay, So what we are doing is we are doing the outside of the feather. So we don't want to lose any of this space in here. Right, This space in here, we don't want to lose any of that. So we are going to set our toolpath to outside which means that it's going to start carving outside this tool, this vector right here, and the actual edge of it will be where this line is. And that's really important so you don't lose any size. So if you were doing a plaque, let's say, and it was 5 inches by 7 inches, if you chose on or inside, you're actually going to lose some of those inches. Maybe not a whole inch, but enough to 
radically change what it's going to look like. You do not want to do that. So what we are going to do is uh, for the outside one, so for the big uh, vector on the outside, we are going to choose outside because we don't want to lose any of this. Um, climb conventional, you don't need to know any about that, don't need anything about that. Um, name, we're, we'll just rename it and we'll call it um, outline. Okay, and then I will hit calculate. Now what it's doing right now is it's telling me, oh, you're going to go through, I'm okay with that. But at least it gives me a warning saying I'm going to go through. As I said before, we'd never actually print 0 0.04 of an inch into a bed. That would be ridiculous. But seeing as though this is an actual, just a tester, I'll, I'll show you it. So I go, okay. And this is what it's going to look like. So what I do is I go in here and then I preview tool path. And it will show me what it's looked like when it's cut out. So this, it's hard to imagine that this is four feet by eight feet, but it's actually four feet by eight feet. And this is the outside of our feather. So I can double click on this and get rid of that. So there's our feather.